this, this case has ramifications not only in every state of Australia with respect to the standing of each governor of each state, because um, the constitution of each state clearly dictates that the governor of the state must be appointed by the Queen of the United Kingdom. And because that requirement is there, <coughs> we believe each and every state, if they were to intervene in, in the case in London, um, gives the people of Australia an opportunity to um, reset Australia's governance. Welcome everybody. Uh, I'm here with Daryl O'Brien, the Senate candidate for the Great Australian Party and all-around legal guru for the Great Australian Party. And today we're going to have a bit of a chat about um, CO588 2020, which is the UK High Court case brought by Rod Culloden against the West Australian Government. And Daryl's going to inform us a little bit of what that case is about and why it is so important uh, in today's uh, legal world. Thanks for the opportunity, Jaden. Yes, I believe CO588 is the most important court case in the history of the Commonwealth of Australia. Uh, the people of Australia really need to be aware of what that court case is saying and why we filed it in London. Um, this court case brings the spotlight on the Western Australian Government and in particular the Governor of Western Australia, the Attorney General of Western Australia and the Chief Justice of the Supreme Court in Western Australia and the ramifications of that case <coughs> um, has a ripple effect all around Australia. So every state in Australia um, essentially falls within the parameters of the claim that Rod Culleton's taken out in London. Um, in particular, with the reason we've included the Governor, the Attorney General and the Chief Justice is because <coughs> we need to see, um, we've put on judicial review in the High Court of London, their standing. Uh, in particular, the Governor, uh, who appoints the Chief Justice and who issues the writ for the elections and appoints the um, parliamentarians who are elected uh, to stand and represent the people of Western Australia. Uh, was that Governor appointed according to the Constitution of the State of Western Australia? This <coughs> speaks the same volume in every other state. They had an opportunity to defend that case to um, show that, uh, yes, they have been appointed correctly. And of course, um, the time was up. The court accepted the filing of that case. The court issued um, orders uh, to the government of Western Australia to file a defence and uh, the deadline uh, appeared and went away. The government could not file a defence, they could not file a notice of appearance. All they could do was send letters to the court to ask them to throw the matter out. Uh, we then took those letters, which they had filed with the court, and we then questioned the precedences, the court precedences, <coughs> which they believed um, showed that the case we took in London was faulty. We asked them to justify those court precedences which, for which they were relying upon uh, according to the constitution of the state of Western Australia and the standing of the governor of Western Australia under the Queen of Australia. They couldn't do that. We then took their reply to the notices that we sent requesting um, some, <clears throat> we needed some sort of substance to uh, their letters to the High Court. They couldn't supply that. So we then put that into an affidavit and we sent that to the High Court in London to clearly show that the Government of Western Australia uh, cannot defend their standing under the Constitution of Western Australia. And with that, why is this case so important and what are the ramifications of the case if, if it goes ahead and is heard by the court in the UK? Why is it so important for everybody to realise what this case actually means? A good question. This, this case 
has ramifications not only in every state of Australia with respect to the standing of each governor of each state, because um, the constitution of each state clearly dictates that the governor of the state must be appointed by the Queen of the United Kingdom. And because that requirement is there, <coughs> we believe each and every state, if they were to intervene in, in the case in London, um, gives the people of Australia an opportunity to um, reset Australia's governance. And that is important because of what's taken place the last three or four decades. The standing of the Queen of Australia, which was created by the Gough Whitlam's uh, Labor government in 1973. Um, another piece of legislation called the Statute Law Revision Act, 1973, which removed the word Commonwealth from all legislation. Uh, all of these misbehaviours have to come to the forefront. The people of Australia need to be aware of this. Uh, the more of us that get onto this case, that ask questions about this case to their prospective um, representatives in state and federal governments, the quicker we can get control of our governments here in Australia. And the quicker we can do this, we, the quicker we can bring transparency into um, government at all levels here in Australia. I think it's crucial. The quicker we get onto this, the better. Regardless of your, who, where your affiliations lie, this is the most important case that's ever hit the courts within the Commonwealth um, because we have clearly caught them out. We have cited legislation dating back to 1953 and we have also targeted specifically the um, Australia Act 1986 and the powers of the states to bring about that application to the Commonwealth <coughs> to disconnect Australia's law from the UK. So all of that's been put into this case and I urge people to have a look at that case and to intervene. We've already got the Torres Strait Islanders on board. They're 100% behind us. Uh, they also speak for a lot of the northern tribes throughout um, northern Australia. And of course, they have a, as much interest in this as anybody else in this country. We're not just targeting those specifically, but they've seen the value in that case. We're urging the rest of Australia to wake up to it as quick as possible. So it's crucial. It's number one news. Essentially, what can people do to help or intervene, as you said. Um, a lot of people might be wondering why or how they can uh, get involved or intervene if they can. Um, just give a, a brief um, uh, chat about how people can get involved and get this case seen and get it heard so we can get some remedy. Well, there are a number of ways of doing this. I believe you could approach your um, local federal and state members of parliament, make them aware of this case. Uh, it is a public case. It is a public court, a high court on the Strand in London. Uh, intervening is uh, um, a way for individuals as well as groups uh, to step in. You, you just get in contact with, um, probably best to get in contact with uh, the Great Australian Party. Um, we can help you then uh, file the appropriate paperwork with the High Court in, in London uh, with respect to intervening. This is what the Torres Strait Islander guys did uh, only a couple of months ago. Um, and it's just a paper trail. But what it says very clearly to the court in London is that there is safety in numbers. Uh, the more people that join this action, uh, the quicker we can sort problems out. Uh, and it's crucial for the, for the future of Australia. And a lot of people don't have a lot of faith in the uh, voting system and the way things are done in getting uh, politicians into parliament. Uh, what can one um, senator or a candidate for Great Australian Party do once they're in, if we get one seat from Great Australian Party into Parliament, what can that one person achieve? That one person can um, bring to the table, to the record, um, CO588 and essentially request of the Governor General uh, their standing um, as Governor General because they too have to show that they've been appointed by the Queen of the United Kingdom as required by Section 2 of the Commonwealth of Australia Constitution. Um, it, and if they cannot, then CO588 is our voice back in London to then put pressure on the Westminster Parliament um, to <coughs> amend or uh, disconnect the um, Australia Act Request Act and bring things back to prior 1973. 
uh, and then do their job by appointing uh, a governor general and governors for each state according to the law. I mean, this is what the law um, programs. It's there for a reason. So the quicker people become aware of this, start asking questions about that case, uh, request of the Great Australian Party to show you the details of that case. Uh, the, the document is about 200 pages long. It goes into painstaking detail um, <coughs> ex explaining the situation, um, showing where the obligations are uh, in law, and of course they ask us to stick by the laws they make, so, so too um, <coughs> they must show they have that same ability to stand by the law. If they can't do that, then we have a course of action to take. We're not out headhunting. We're just out there to bring the law front and centre and have people, all of us, um, abide by that law. That's all we have. So the, the case in the UK was filed in 2020. Uh, it's taken uh, nearly a year to get uh, 12 months ahead of all that. How come it's taken so long? Um, to have anything happen out of the UK courts with this matter and how do you see the, f uh, the future into what can happen um, when it does start to be heard in the court? When can we see some sort of result out of that? Funnily enough, the Government of Western Australia um, were required to file their defence by the 19th of March 2020. Um, if that rings any bells, that's when COVID-19 was brought down. Um, the court in London was shut down until September. Uh, in September, the uh, court then had an obligation to um, to then look at that matter in detail and put it in front of a judge. So the case manager was in charge of that case. Uh, <clears throat> in September, they then uh, uh, um, said to us that there was a lot of paperwork on this case you know, on, in the uh, registry. That's when we found out that the state solicitor for Western Australia had been writing letters to the court asking them to drop it and throw the case out, which gave us the opportunity to then correspond with the state solicitor in Western Australia. And, and like I said earlier, they failed to do that. <coughs> so we then filed that affidavit with the court. Um, we have an obligation to um, uh, maintain pressure on that case, which is what we've done through the inter intervention. So. Um, <coughs> The case was put in front of a judge uh, November 2020 and the judge now has been confronted with uh, I think three inter interventions for which the judge then has to take all of those interventions into account. So <clears throat> here we are now, it's June 2021 and uh, <clears throat> we're still calling out for inter interveners. But that doesn't stop the court from moving forward on the case. So. We are um, moving down that road at the moment. Uh, we are in communication with the court and the court's still got that case there as a priority. Um, as you can imagine, it is a hot potato, uh, but we just want it to get hotter. And the more people that intervene, the more people that become aware of that case, the hotter that potato is going to get. Um, our aim is to put it out of the, take it out of the court's hands and put it into the parliament's hands which is where it belongs. It belongs with the Westminster Parliament. The House of Commons and the House of Lords need to confront what we've got in that case and the ramifications of that case to the Commonwealth of Australia and its standing. Brexit has already spoken for the people in the United Kingdom and they're saying we're happy with the monarchy. We're happy with the British Empire as it was, um, established and has been running for hundreds of years. And believe me, it's not perfect. We all know it's not perfect, but the laws uh, that were being passed by that British Empire are there to help all of us. They're not the um, bad guys. The laws are there to maintain our freedoms. So <clears throat> we're trying to really push that, those freedoms and get things back to um, something that we can understand and we, we can apply. Now, come what may with those who have been misbehaving, the law also um, provides for that it gives us a remedy to deal with those people. Um, <clears throat> and that's all we can do really. We can just promote this case and say, please be aware of it. Please have a look at it. Um, please ask questions. Um, that case uh, is puts all of those in all departments of government, state and federal on notice. <clears throat> we need to put everything on hold until 
the details of that case are put out to the Australian public so that they understand what it is that we've done. Uh, because the quicker we can do that, uh, the quicker we can get our society back and our freedoms back. Because the, uh, we've been robbed of our freedoms, which these laws prevent from happening. Uh, the, the performance of the last 12 months around the world, and in here in particular in Australia, is well and truly beyond the laws that um, we've inherited. Quarantine um, can only be exercised with respect to any emergencies for a period of 48 hours. Um, governments do not have the power to lock you down unless it can be demonstrably justified. They have to demonstrate that there is an emergency. And until such time as they can do that, they do not have the power to call an emergency. It's, it's black and white. All we're doing is we're trying to make you understand what the law says. Don't rely on Channel 9, don't rely on Channel 7 or ABC or SBS. They're lying to you. And when you see the, what the ramifications are of CO588, you'll understand better why. These people have been running bluff for too long and now it's time to stop and we can do it peacefully.